बोलो माइक टेस्टिंग वन टू थ्री come here to have their weekend time to enjoy that it's called a mulsi dam or mulsi lake you can see the water behind me but uh, most of us no, don't know the story behind it and while we were sitting here talking about that history will only do justice to how events have been recorded in this landscape let's go a bit further back on the timeline let's go back in history to around early 1900s this is the time when there was no water here when mulsi dam didn't exist when britishers were there in india and they were giving up infrastructural projects to those who could afford it who could take up the development work in our country tata emerged as the biggest contender for bagging multiple dam projects all over india majorly in maharashtra you could see many tata dams operating even now this mulsi dam also has got a tata hydroelectric power generation unit just next to it so when this project was being awarded to tata company then there was a heave at that time people were not pleased you could see these embankments these this area this this that is now inundated with water there were villages here people used to work in their farms here these farmers were exacted upon of their lands so just then a personality came into focus in the spotlight that we are going to talk about now a bit about and his name was pandurang senapati babat let's get to know more about his personality pandurang mahadev babat a personality who was born in 1880 he was born in ratnagiri and he came to pune and got his education from the dakkan college he went to britain for higher studies on a government scholarship there he met savarkar brothers and he had an aim of coming back to india and starting the revolutionary movement he also got associated with india house in britain so india house was an organization located somewhere far from india in london and it was opened in the first decade of 20th century by an indian lawyer himself Shamji Krishna Verma. He felt the need of identifying the opportunity of opening a, a platform for sponsoring the revolutionary ideas that were not given enough impetus at that time. Indian diaspora and eventually even some Indians from India only used to fly off to London to get trained and interact with similar minds. And so it served as an organization to constitute a major body of force. and support the nationalistic movement by remaining far away from their motherlands also so among many other names a few of them have been etched on the uh, pages of indian history one among who was the name of shri babat ji also and when the right time came then he came back to india to execute and implement what he learned out there on his tenure in india house so let's get back to the block down so he comes to india and starts his revolution there was alipore bombing that took place in calcutta in 1908 and it was believed that he had a role in that so british government held him responsible and imprisoned him in 1912 but during this phase there was a transition that happened in pandurang's beliefs he had realized that our country our country men and women they were not aware of the fact that they were under a foreign rule so he thought that it is first necessary to make them realize to aware them that they are not a free country so we see a change in senapati's uh, beliefs or i'd say focus earlier he was more inclined towards being a revolutionary adopting violent methods like bombing to gain independence but as he comes to india he makes it a mission of his life that he wants to educate people rather than fighting for the independence in a violent method so pandurang mahadev babat also titled as senapati he had adopted the non violent method 
and he had a change in his philosophy and he had turned towards non-violence and there came the opportunity to follow his beliefs to follow his philosophy in 1921 tata starts developing this dam with the support of the british government so pandurang mahadev bapat finally decides to fight against the construction of this dam but this time not with violence but adopting the gandhi's satyagraha fast forward to the year 1921 this man pandurang senapati bapat he emerged as a people's man of this region he led them to realize that their lands were soon going to be confiscated by them by who by the britishers who gave contracts to tata group who had the vision of making a dam that we are enjoying right now but before that this land was seized mercilessly without seeking permission of the farmers who used to till and tow the soil here tenants land owners farmers all those who were aggrieved they were represented by senapati bapu so in 1921 a three years struggles foundation was laid by the by senapati bapu and that struggle initially based on the gandhian philosophy of non violence but eventually it erupted out of impatience into vandalizing some trenches that were erected here that were positioned here without permission by the tata group long story short it all turned out to be against the farmers against senapati bapu only and he was imprisoned incarcerated over the charges of vandalizing that that project at the end bottom line is that those who used to work here whose livelihoods used to be dependent on this area the farming activity all of that came to an end an abrupt halt compensation was not duly admitted to those who really needed it the land owners the farmers got their due compensation and that to a paltry amount and the tenants still were left out of it after that struggle of 3 years he was imprisoned and soon his revolutionary journey took a turn to his popularity and in 1947 he was also selected as the person who hoisted the indian national flag on the land of pune for the first time so that is how he emerged as a people's man here and how he is commemorated in the name of many institutions that have been established in this name